Um, week two, which is going to be an awesome one. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into it now. I'm going to share my screen. If anyone has any questions, you can unmute and fire away or feel free to type any comments. Um, Jesse, you want to add anything before we get started or? No, just, just, just uh, that this class is taught by Russ Fitzpatrick. He's a part of our Animac, Animac Works program. He is a huge, huge asset to us. Um, he has this whole platform of videos that he does. And Russ is not a nobody. He's a huge, huge real estate producer and a big, big broker of one of the biggest, biggest firms down in Florida. So he's someone to learn off of and everything that you're going to, um, watch on this video is is a lot of i watched it and it's a lot of good information for you okay so i hope you enjoy perfect can you see the screen with russ now yeah yep cool i'm gonna pull this out um let me know if audio is good right away jesse if you don't mind there's a little delay there's a long delay Hey guys, welcome to the Quarantine Realtor. We're gonna give everybody a few minutes to uh, get nestled into your cozy little quarantine nooks. We're gonna go ahead and uh, share some real insight, I think, today as to how you might be able to take a listing or two in the next 30 days. I really believe that in my heart. In the next 30 days, you can take a listing. I've uh, been doing this exactly this way since I was younger than most of you, I can promise you that. Um, a lot of text chat already on. We're, we're just past five. Let me go ahead and pull up my PowerPoint and get rolling with you guys. There we go. All right. It is five o'clock on a Wednesday, and every Wednesday in April, we're going to be getting together, guys. I'm going to try to help. It's honestly what this is about. Animac Home Mortgage employs thousands of people across the country that are being affected by the COVID pandemic, and all of our realtor referral partners are being affected in some way or another. Some of us are being affected with the health and well-being of our friends and family. Some of us are being affected by inconvenience, if at all. But what I'm uh, here to focus on is the financial ramifications of the COVID pandemic and the financial ramifications of being a residential real estate agent in 2020. If you're like most of our friends in the residential real estate space, you probably had a good first quarter. And it's likely that you're going to have a bad second quarter. You know, uh, it's, it's fairly reasonable to suggest that there are those um, one off transaction that some of you are already rolling your eyes at. No, Russ, you're wrong. I'm selling houses every day. But the reality is that a lot of people are putting their home purchasing, home shopping, listing their home on hold right now. And it might just have uh, a, a strong economic effect on some of us, right? So um, I, I want to tell you this before we get digging into the, the meat of the matter here. I put five kids through private school and college being a realtor, doing exactly what you guys do for a living. And recently, I've been charged with the responsibility to generate leads, clean leads, convert leads for a large national relocation movement, a referral network that we've created. And in that capacity, I'm working every day with buyers and sellers, just like I've done for the last 35 years of my life. So these are real world solutions for you that my friends that make over $600,000 a year are doing right now. 
and I picked their brains and talked to them on the phone so that we could share these best practices with you guys. So without further ado, we're going to dig into the quarantine realtor. I want to remind you that my spider senses are tingling. If I'm being honest, man, my mood switches every five minutes. Uh, some moment I'm thinking that this is going to be over in four weeks. And the next moment I'm thinking this is going to be four years worth of uh, financial crisis. And we're going to have to rebuild again. And all those... Uh, anxieties from 2008, 9, and 10 are rearing their ugly, uh, ugly head. Bruce Springsteen's line says, wound up like a dog that's been beat too much. Remember that line? Well, I feel a little that way because I suffered through a crisis back in the uh, mid 80s when the interest rates were rampant at 11%. And then I suffered through a crisis in 2008, 9, and 10 that almost killed me. And I'm not joking. <laughs> And now we're here uh, together in 2020. We don't know if this is a short-lived or a long-term crisis, but I can tell you that when the water gets rough, when there's turbulence in the marketplace, the best decision that you can make is to get in and row, paddle. And I, at the end of last week's session, I mentioned, with or without credibility in your mind, but earnest in mind, that if you would get in the boat and row with me, you'd have a better 2020 than if you don't. And I, I, I hope that I'll get some validation uh, in that over the next couple of weeks time, right? Paddle, 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 row hard. The only other lesson I really want to stress, and this is, might be the most controversial conversation I can have with a group of realtors is that sales is a skill. Sales, the profession of sales is a skill. And not every realtor has that skill. You know what I mean by that? And I know there's a wide variety of talent on this line right now. Uh, but the, the opportunity to uh, build rapport, establish credibility, and to uh, influence decision making. In other words, change or help change someone's mind. That's sales in a nutshell to me. And it starts with an organized uh, presentation of compelling arguments. So you have to have this, this kind of stature inside of you that says, there's some compelling reasons that you might want to list your home in 2020, right now during the COVID uh, crisis, right? Or there's certainly some reasons that we want to get ready to get your house on the market so that when the market starts moving again, we're working together to do that. So we're going to talk a little bit about those skills, those sales skills. So the two themes of the quarantine realtor is get in and work and know what you're doing. We're going to be soliciting these buyers and sellers together. We're going to get started right now. I'm going to show you some work that I've already done. And as a friend, I would say that time blocking is one of the great resources of any salesperson. <clears throat> so if you have an opportunity <clears throat> to work from home, Perhaps you, you chunk out that two hours during the morning or you chunk out those three hours in the afternoon where someone else is taking care of the kids because you've got to go out and make the bacon, right? You've got to go and produce. And I, I want to say this as a friend one last time. I think you could have the best summer you've ever had because some of the folks that are on this line, the same people that are struggling right now are the same people that haven't ever really developed their listing acquisition skills. They work buyers pretty comfortably, but a lot of realtors maybe never cross over onto that listing side of the transaction as their primary go-to. We're gonna talk a little bit about more about that. I told you we're gonna focus on four channels. You've got a subdivision farming session coming up in April with us. You're gonna learn what I do every day with seasoned leads. Gosh, if I could just take that chunk of my brain out and give it to you, you'd be inspired by these older leads that some realtors call dead, but are coming back to life right now. With the interest rates moving around and the market starting to get volatile, uh, some of those buyers from 2019 that never made a buyer decision are, are looking again. Next week on Wednesday, we're gonna be doing database mining. Boy, are we gonna dig into some really cool stuff in database mining, but today I'm going to focus on a <clears throat> a source of listings that doesn't require you to leave your house. And if 
as God is my witness, 450 to 600 listings that I've taken from this source in the last 35 years. And this day, today, I pulled up absentee owners in my hometown and did this work. And then I'm gonna share with you over the next few weeks, the, the buyer inquiries or the listing inquiries that come in to me and how they're handled and what we're doing. That's why we're doing this. Today, we're gonna to share an opportunity that's absolutely free for you to learn about. It's proven to get listings. It's easy as heck. I almost said the bad word. It's easy as heck. No cold calling. So anybody who's on the line, is a cold call cowboy, Russ Fitzpatrick with the Mike Ferry attitude, no. I'm gonna show you how you can get listings today without ever making a cold call, and without ever going on a listing appointment. Okay, it's a new product called Zoom. It ain't going away, right? We're gonna be able to do listing appointments on Zoom. It's the old Skype, right? And I know this. I know a $200 million team about six miles that way that does this every single day. And I know her personally, and I'm not saying she learned it from me because we all learned it from another person and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Now, Megan and Carrie are standing by and manning the text chat. They're gonna fill you in with a step-by-step -step formula. There's a document that I've created that kind of takes all the notes for you. You don't have to <clears throat> jot down every fastidious little note of tonight's conversation. We've done, a, I think it's a three-page step-by-step -step formula that you're gonna follow should you decide to lock arms with us and walk towards this or get in the boat and row, if you will, right? Here's one of my favorite arguments from Dayton, Ohio and Florence, Kentucky and, and uh, you know, suburbs of Philly and, and, and suburbs of New Jersey. They say, well, we don't live in Las Vegas. We don't live in Miami, so we don't have any vacation homeowners. Well, the, the class isn't called vacation homeowners. The, the course is about absentee owners. And an absentee owner is defined as a landlord. You don't have any landlords in, in Pennsylvania. You don't have any landlords in New Jersey. Shoot, landlords own single family homes, don't they? Landlords own multifamily homes. And I'll tell you about a roofer that I met. I sent him one of these. You're gonna get a kick out of this because I've tried them all, but this is my favorite marketing piece to an absentee owner. It's a handwritten note. I sent a handwritten note to a roofer and he ended up listing his home with me. Wanna know something else? He listed five more homes with me. One handwritten note to a roofer that owned a single family home that he had, had, written, had rented out. I built rapport, we listed his home, we sold it for him, we listed four more homes for him. I'm gonna tell you about a doctor, Panu, look him up, P-A-N-N-U. Carrie knows him well, because one day I sent Dr. Panu a letter that looked like this, and he called me back, actually his wife did, Dr. Panu's wife, and it turned out they had 30 homes, and I sold about nine of them, and that's no fib, guys. I put five kids through private school and college doing this exact work. It worked then and it works even better today because we didn't have Zoom or Skype and we didn't have the COVID virus and the type of market uncertainty that is sending fear through the hearts and minds of every homeowner in America right now. Airbnb owners, you ever heard of them? Are there a few of them? Maybe so. How about parents? that own their children's home or children that own their parents' home. Is that only in Vegas or Miami? No, there's, there's inherited properties, estate owned, deceased property owners that have turned the property over to their estate and they haven't gone through the channels to probate it and or list it for sale yet. So the first question that you might have is how do you find absentee owners? And um, for some of you, this is going to be basic MLS tax roll work. For others of you, you're going to have to take an online class. All the classes in most of the boards across the country are online now. But uh, you're going to be looking for owners whose uh, tax bill gets mailed somewhere else. That's the best way I can explain it. That the property, the subject property resides here but the tax bill is mailed somewhere else. 
And we're gonna find some of those for you real quick. It's very, very easy on almost any MLS in the country, any tax roll system. Our system down here in Southeast Florida is called IMAP, I-M-A-P-P. -P. Maybe you have IMAP too. But we'll produce an accurate list for you. I'm gonna show you right here on our IMAP how it works. Couldn't be any more simple, guys. If you want to identify absentee owners in any marketplace that you're in, just go to your tax roll. You're going to see a little yellow bar right there. It's very difficult to see because it was light. The screen was very light when I did the screenshot, but I took this arrow and I said, step one, list the zip code under property zip code. Step two, list the zip code of the um, of the mailing address of the property tax bill as not the same. So it says does not equal 33301. 33301 happens to be my zip code, but if you were an IMAP, you could do that with any zip code in the country. Just put the properties in 33301, but the homeowner, the person who owns that residence lives outside of 33301, and what you'll get is a list. This might be too basic for some of y'all, but I'm telling you, I made a lot of money doing this. See these little blue arrows shooting across your screen right now? I want you to look at where these homeowners live. They own a home in 3301, but they live in Marlboro, New Jersey. They live in Waterville, Maine. They live in Essex, Connecticut. Now, I know that Fort Lauderdale has more absentee owners than Keokuk, Iowa. But I don't believe that you could argue that you couldn't find landlords, duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, single family homes, condos, and townhomes that are owned by uh, an investor or a person who, who owns it for their family members. What? Now we're, we're in, what are we in? We're in April of 2020. What do every one of those blue arrows have in common? Well, there's a good chance that they've enjoyed 10 years of appreciation. So if you were a opportunist and you could capitalize on 10 years of straight appreciation, would you maybe have an interest in doing that? What if you add to that some market uncertainty? Think about it. The seller might feel uncertain about the future of the market. They hear the word recession eight times a day on the news they may have an equity position. Most of those blue dots have some equity position, right? And potentially their liquid assets, the stock market, are down. Stock market's down, right? You know, not their liquid, but their stock market might be down. So now they have equity in their home. They've enjoyed 10 years of, of equity appreciation during the last decade. They've experienced market uncertainty before if, they, if they're older than 12, right? And then they might also have what? Maybe, just maybe, they're having some income challenges. Maybe they own a restaurant or a business. Maybe they own a plumbing company. Maybe they own a, 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 a holiday store. <laughs> whatever their entrepreneurial endeavor, whatever their job, there's a small chance I wouldn't even say a small chance with 6.5 million unemployed claims this month, they might be facing some income challenges. The other three at the bottom of the black square on the right side of your screen is they're facing certain low interest rates. We, I was joking with a mortgage banker yesterday that, you know, the, 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 the rates are, you know, in the threes. And then we were complaining that certain loan products are actually in the low fours. We said, well, gosh, uh, you mentioned complaining about a low force. <laughs> Nobody who ever in you know my generation would ever complain about low force, but they are experiencing low interest rates. And the reason that low interest rates affects an ab absentee owner is because at this point, it might be prudent to sell that house and finance a different house and take advantage of these low rates, right? Another thing is uh, most economists agree that things change a little bit during an election year. And we're in an election year, aren't we? And I bet you that Biden and Trump are gonna be going at it real hard and heavy over the next six months. And some of that creates turmoil and tension in the market and, and they're saying things, you know, and, and they're fighting about things. And election years are notoriously nervous for uh, large asset holders. They, they, they shudder at it. So if you're a, a landlord and you own property, 
and then not to mention this COVID crisis. It certainly creates some semblance of, you know, disturbance in the force, if you will, right? There's a disturbance in the force, Luke. So when I suggest that you do what I did to sell four or five, 600 homes in my career, it's all about handwritten notes. Now my daughter, who's now 21, wrote a bunch of these handwritten notes as a teenager, and she got a few bucks doing it. I paid her to do it. My son uh, used to do a lot of my farming work for me and get paid for it. And um, you can find nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles that are not busy right now and they'll be willing to handwrite notes if you don't want to write them but i've never written more than about 20 in a week i want you to hear that i usually like a nice easy flow about 20 notes a week i'm not a mass marketer i find 20 people that own a place in essex connecticut and they also own a place down here by me and i make a connection with them i send them a handwritten note the handwritten note that I've used for many, many years simply says, I passed by your South Florida home this morning. We're working with a lot of families who would like to purchase your home before the holidays, or maybe would say before uh, the summer. Please call if you would consider upgrading. Please call if you'd consider downsizing, or if you consider a 1031 exchange. Now that's a curious terminology that you might do well to learn about, your Shadowwood Coral Springs home may be worth more than you think. And I always include the subdivision name if I can. I always include the subdivision name because it feels more intimate. It feels more personal. The handwritten note, naming their subdivision, and having some semblance of time sensitivity to it with that holidays, before the holidays or before the summer. Now remember I told you about an agent that does 200 million a year. It's not an exaggeration. I'm not gonna mention her by name. But I had firsthand proof because one of my buddies got her note. No return address, a real stamp. This is, she's now a $200 million producer. She was a $120 million producer when I, when I noticed this. And um, inside of her letter, it simply says, I was outside your Pompano Park home yesterday. Again, uses the subdivision in the note. Do you have any interest in selling? Your house might be worth more than you think. Can you think of anything more simple than a handwritten note that shows up at your, in your mailbox and you open it and that's all it says. And maybe there's a business card inside of it as well. And maybe that business card reveals that this is a realtor. Um, but essentially this is not rocket science here, guys. This is real easy stuff. The secret as to why it seems to work so very, very well is because if you own a home in Philadelphia, but you live in Harrisburg, you don't receive the EBDM farming junk mail. You don't get that mail from all those local realtors that are pounding EBDM into the farm areas, right? The other thing, the reason it works so well is because a lot of these sellers have great equity. It's easy to find them, right? It's easy to find them we just showed you and very clearly they're probably not a candidate for for sale by owner if you live in Harrisburg and you're selling a place in in in, in uh, Philly you probably aren't going to you know go through all the trouble to DIY it right and most, many of them don't have a local realtor because you know they just came upon this resident for a reason now here's a proven formula and I'm going to put my neck on the line here in a minute because I'm going to give you some guarantees. Why the heck would a guy that's not charging you money give you a guarantee? Because I want to induce your confidence in me. I'm going to guarantee it, okay? Here's the proven for formula. Put effort in. Get the warm contacts out. And then you're going to have some at-bats. That's what I'm going to guarantee, some at-bats. I'm not going to guarantee that you don't whiff on the at-bat. Remember last week, if you were with us, we talked about one of my great pet peeves of this real estate career has been to watch a $25,000 commission opportunity escape the, the, the fingertips of a young realtor or an emerging realtor because they just didn't have the sales skills necessary to close it. But I will guarantee you that a thousand notes will equal somewhere in the vicinity of a 10% response rate. 
Now, I wouldn't say that about a postcard, would I? I wouldn't say that about a, um, uh, you know, a, a direct mail piece that came out of your, your Fortune 500 branded documents. But handwritten notes have a different uh, relationship to the consumer. They, they get open and they get read. So I can verify and testify that you get 100 calls out of 1,000 notes. Remember before I told you I never send out more than about 20 a week? The reason I like 20 a week, week after week, is that's about 1,000 a year. With 100 calls coming in, I can field those calls and see who's interested and see who's not. And like a, a metal detector going over the beach sand, the metal detector doesn't mind that it's sand and that it's not gold, does it? Well, I act as a metal detector. I'm, I'm, I'm sifting through those inbound calls to find out who's serious, who's not, build some rapport, qualify them, and then see where it goes. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I'll bet you get 20 at bats out of a thousand notes. So there's an investment, and I'm personally gonna guarantee you're gonna get calls. And I'm gonna personally guarantee that you get appointments. Can't guarantee you're gonna close those appointments because sales talent needs to be developed and I don't have any understanding of where your sales talent lies right now but if we work together we get to know each other maybe we'll we'll learn a little bit more about that too when an absentee owner calls you you have to sound like the local expert in addition to being courteous and professional you're a busy agent you know you know a lot about market timing and you know a lot about the opportunity you know about 1031 exchanges you say have you thought about a 1031 exchange have you thought about selling this summer and maybe getting something on a golf course, getting something in a condo, maybe getting something on water? Uh, maybe you have some ideas that you can share with them, ideas that, about equestrian properties or getting a ranch or maybe just selling this and, and, and liquidity is good, isn't it? Liquidity is good. That's an easy thing to say. A lot of sellers are going to read your note that says you were by their house. They're going to say something like, why were you at my house? Right? They're going to say, why did you send me a note? What were you doing over by my house? Those conversations are conversation starters that are beautiful. You know, I spend a lot of time in Shadowwood Coral Springs. That's where I work. And I work with a lot of buyers. So I'm constantly driving in throughout there. But I saw your house uh, and I noticed that you don't live in it. So I thought about reaching out to you because the market's right for you to liquidate right now. A lot of sellers are going to immediately go for the throat. Well, how much is my house worth? Or do you have a buyer? You know the type, right? You just have to be able to bounce those normal objections and those normal conversations out. How much is my house worth? Well, I haven't seen it yet. Do you have a neighbor that has a key? If I can do a pre-listing inspection for your house, I can take all the comparables that a normal appraiser is going to use, and I can give them to you, and we can decide how much your house is worth together. But I really have to see it before I can tell you that. Do you have a buyer for your house? Well, I have about 2,700 buyers for the Coral Springs Marketplace, and that's not a joke. I could bring you the list if you want to see it. But the 2,700 buyers I'm working with don't necessarily have your house in mind yet. I need to learn about it, I need to promote it, and I need to market it to them. So the answer to your question is, yes, I have a lot of buyers, but I don't know which one would fit for your house yet because I've never seen your house. Do you have a neighbor that has a key to the house? where I could go do a pre-listing inspection on the house and get back to you on that? Call to close, call to call to action. So we've got an introduction. We present the opportunity to the seller. We've got to tell them what's in it for you. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. We've got some standard objection handling techniques, market timing ideas. Then we're going to hit some things called unique selling propositions. I hope you're intrigued by unique selling propositions because they put all my kids through college. Unique selling propositions are a great way to raise the right eyebrow of your seller to say, this dude's different. This lady's different. I like this lady. She's unique. And I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. And the big mistake that a lot of realtors make when they're on the phone with a the seller, they don't have a next step in mind. They just think it's a conversation. Well, sales isn't a conversation. It's a strategic, organized presentation of compelling arguments to build rapport, establish credibility, and influence decision making. You want me to say that one more time? It's a, it's, a, it's a strategic presentation of compelling arguments to build rapport, build credibility, and influence decision making. So when you're in sales, you're moving them down a little game board, aren't you? You're moving them from one space to the next space to the next space. And you need to know what your next space is. What is your call to action? You've heard it from me twice already. 
my call to action with every absentee owner is do you have a neighbor with a key? That's it. That's my call to action. If I can get a seller to give permission to his neighbor to give me his key as a realtor, we're going a long way, baby. That's the secret. That's the secret step right there. Do you have a neighbor that has a key? Do you have a family member that lives locally that has a key? Because I sure would like to take a look at the house and do a pre-listing inspection. And guess what? Even with COVID, I can go into an empty house. I can take a look through and make a pre-listing inspection. So the outcome of the call is, would you let me do some research for you? Would it be worth your time to have me call you back and go over some numbers? Is there anybody with a local key? You've heard that now three or four times. I need to get an idea of the condition of the home so that I can kind of tell you what the highest possible price would be. These are great closing quips for realtors. If, if you don't agree with me, you've got a different selling style. I apologize. I'm, I've made a living doing this for quite a while. I've an appraisal background and I can report the condition to you. I can do a pre-listing inspection and get back to you on all the conditional items that might be a red flag for you. And then the last one, just a quick jump into questions. If you think you're losing a seller, do you mind if I ask you, you have two air conditioning systems in that house or one central air, yeah? What's the age of the air conditioning systems? What's the age of the roof? If I had to ask you a quick question, would you say that your kitchen is average, below average or above average, your kitchen? How about your master bathroom? So now you're asking thoughtful questions and getting the seller engaged. So instead of them coming at you with, how much is your commission? You know, do you have a buyer? How much is my house is worth? You're coming at them with thoughtful questions and, and, and ideas to help move the puck down the ice, right? Sales is about taking the, the, the conversation to the next step. And if this is too basic for some of you, I apologize. I wanted to go through it for the folks that need it, right? All parties on Zoom. Oh my gosh, you just got the key. You just got the keys to the COVID kingdom, baby. I'm on the phone with him. I get the key from the neighbor. The neighbor leaves it in the box. I go and do my pre-listing inspection. Now I want the husband and wife, the, the, the single homeowner, to be on Zoom with me. If he doesn't have Zoom, he's got FaceTime. If he doesn't have FaceTime, good old-fashioned telephone work. I'm not going to go through all the nuance of a listing presentation here. But I will tell you that every single absentee owner that ever calls me is going to get this letter next. It says, Dear Bob, it was a pleasure speaking with you about your Rio Vista home. The following, I hope you hear this, four most popular services that our clients enjoy. Please pick from any of these services that you might need. All you have to do is call me and I'll provide these services. First service that I'll provide any absentee owner for free is a free pre-listing inspection service to identify potential red flags for resale. Deal killers, equity killers, inspection killers, things that could set us back if we don't take care of them. I'm going to do a pre-listing inspection for you. Second one, free comparables of every home that's ever sold. I love the language of this sentence, guys. Number two, Free comparable of every sold property that an appraiser would use to determine the value of your home. That's different than a free CMA, isn't it? A free CMA or free comparables of every sold property that an appraiser would use to determine the value of your home. I'm not going to, I'm just going to provide them to you as a favor. A free real estate staging expert evaluation. I've told the story of uh, the tag team work that my wife and I have done in the residential real estate space for years and how I'll say, have you ever had your home staged? Has your property ever been looked at by a staging professional? Well, just coincidental, my wife, Carrie, she's a staging professional. So if you'd like, I can, I can offer you that free service, that free staging evaluation and a report to help you maximize your property value and speed to sale. These are called unique selling propositions, one through four. And the last one my accountant's great at, he does me a lot of favors. A free 15 minute consultation with my CPA to determine if your ownership is netting you the highest possible tax benefits, whether or not a 1031 exchange might be prudent for you. So all I'm doing is trying to stand out from a sea of sameness about a bunch of realtors that offer CMAs and I'm trying to say, look, for a couple 
you know, pick up the phone. I'm the area expert. You can give me a call. I'll give you any of these four free services. So every single seller that calls me, even the hundred that call back on the thousand newsletter, I mean, a thousand note cards go out, a hundred sellers call me over the course of, you know, months and months and months, and all hundred of them get this letter from me. Now, Megan was nice enough to post in the text chat the step-by-step -step formula so you can dig in ad nauseum and you can execute, but I'm gonna go through my neck on the line now. Okay, I'm putting my neck on the line for you because, and I'm not doing it for the $400,000 a year realtor that's online today that knows how to do this stuff in their sleep. I'm doing it for the single mom that needs to sell two houses this summer. I'm doing it for the guy who's nearing retirement and really needs to pop a couple deals in 2020. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm putting my neck on the line for the real estate agent that says, I don't know what I'm going to do to make a living. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you, do this. You'll make a living, especially if you do it my way and you do it right. You're going to, the promise that I'm making to you is if you do a thousand notes my way, and I do not want you to do a thousand notes in a month. Your hand will burn out and you won't want to do it. Just do 20 or 30 notes a week. You know, it's an hour, hour and a half time block. It's not a huge commitment. It certainly doesn't cost any real money for these note cards and these silly little stamps that we still use in the uh, snail mail world, right? But I guarantee you this will get read a lot more often than your emails and your messages. So if you send out a thousand notes my way, and you don't list two, two to four houses. Most of you are gonna list four. The best are going to, best of you are gonna list five or six. I swear to you, that's gonna happen. Some of you are gonna be struggling in the sales world and you need advice about how to sell more effectively, right? Reach out to me by email. And I will, this is where I'm put my neck on the line. And the seller called you back and you didn't, you didn't, they were interested in the selling, but you didn't get the appointment. Just email me. I'm saying email me. I will call the seller and I'll do that for you because I'm rolling off my sleeves and going to work with you right now. And if you get a call from a seller who didn't convert, but you think that they want to sell their house, I'm going to ask you about your conversation. If they said, no, I don't want to sell. That's not a person I'm going to call back for you. They said, yeah, we are interested in selling, but it just didn't click with them. Those are the ones I'm going to be your supervisor and say, Hey, I work for, with Terry in some capacity. I'm a, I'm a mentor of hers. I'm a friend of hers. She's on my team, whatever I'm going to say. And I'm going to talk to the seller for you. And I'm going to find out if there's any meat on that bone. I'd love to do that a thousand times this year with a thousand real estate agents from across the country. My pleasure. Then I'm going to analyze your workflow, your scripts and your listing appointments. And we'll probably offer some additional classes about that. If you think that sounds silly, I'm a silly guy, man. I'm just going to do my best to help right now. Now, I told you we're going to focus on four channels. Absentee owners was today. Subdivision farming will be the last one we do. And seasoned leads, I hope you'll get a kick out of that because I'm having a blast with that. But next week on Wednesday, starting at 5 o'clock, I'm bringing in a buddy of mine that is a consummate, probably about a $300,000 a year earner, never made a cold call in the last six years doesn't do any real direct mail to any farm areas or anything. He's just a database mining guy. He was taught how to database mine. He knows how to database mine. I know him really, really well. He used to work for me in my brokerage for many, many years. I was kind of the first broker he ever had. And I taught him a lot of things. Um, so he's doing me a favor and coming on next week to talk about his experiences in database mining. Now, this is a guy that has four kids, including one newborn who he just gave birth to 10 days ago, right? He has four kids and um, he does about six closings a month, six residential real estate closing transactions a month with four kids underfoot. So database mining works for him. Uh, next week on Wednesday, we're going to do database mining at five o'clock. We're going to do a little spin to it where we're going to focus on artificial intelligence and a little thing called behavioral um, data, well, it's actually called online behavior, right? So what are their online behaviors and how can we analyze their online behaviors to score our database? 
That's a really neat thing that didn't exist just a few years ago. It's called the predictive data analytics or online behavior analytics. So we need to know if these people are shopping for a home, if they're using mortgage calculators, and we can do that now. We're, we can spy on them. Big Brother can spy on your database like Google does, like Facebook does, like Amazon does. And if you're a realtor on this call and you're like, well, that's what Fortune 500 vendors do. I can't do that. I'm just a lowly realtor. Well, that's not true. You have the exact same ability to spy on your database and find out what they're doing to see if they're thinking about buying or selling a home. Gosh, guys, you could tell I pour my heart into this. I hope. You don't have to like me, but you sure got to know I'm trying as hard as I can to help. There's some people on this line that'll take two, three, four listings in the next six months from absentee owners. And then there's other people who go, ah, that was a bunch of hoon. Put five kids through private school and five kids through college doing this, baby. I know how to make money in residential real estate and I'm here to help you. If you'll get in the boat and row with us, you'll make money. Work with us in 2020. And if you appreciate what we're doing, we only hope you'll Show some of that appreciation, show some of that love to your Annie Mac mortgage professionals across the country. We're all in the same boat, baby. We're all facing the same hardships. We're all facing the same stress and the same challenges. And, um, you know, uh, I certainly appreciate being able to poke my head out of our little dungeon. I haven't gotten a haircut in a couple weeks, right? But God bless you and your family especially your elderly parents and grandparents, friends and family. Let's keep them safe. I've got a couple nieces that suffer terribly from asthma. We're dreadfully afraid that they would catch this thing and vanish from this earth. So there's a lot of real world fears going on for all of us. Maybe the least of which is money. But if money is your concern and you need to earn right now, get in the boat and row, baby. Let's do it together. Thanks a lot for being on. It's the Quarantine Realtor. All righty. Stop share. What do you guys think? Audio is good. Is your phone on, Jesse, or no? Um, I'm on. Yeah. Um, I want to know. Like, listen, I I got a lot of lot of good things out of that, and Russ is Russ is phenomenal, and he's exclusive exclusive to Animac. We paid a lot a lot of money for Russ, and what he does for Annie Mac and, and all our realtor partners is, you know, it's priceless. Like the, the value that he brings day in and day out to, to us is, is, is a lot. And he's, we're here to help, help our realtor partners. That's all Brian. You're, you're the same way. This is what we want to do is build you guys up as much as possible. You know, when, when you're making money, hopefully, we're making more money as well with you. And this is what we want to do. We want to help, help every one of you, you know, be the best that you can be. And we have a lot of tools to, to utilize, to make this happen as well. Um, I do want to know if anybody has any questions um, that I can relate to. Obviously I'm on the mortgage side of things, so I'm probably not going to have the best answers for you, but this is why I like to bring these classes to you guys because what I can teach you is mortgage related and, and we go through all those classes and things, but I want to bring classes to you that are real estate related. What can help you build your business right now, especially during these times. And, and Russ is the man to do that. And Brian is as well. And this is what we bring to you guys. Um, and if there's any questions, just fire away, uh, put them in the chat box. We can reach out to Russ, get the answers that you need. And then we'll get back to you as well if you if you have anything. But I do appreciate you guys all all coming on. I, I think everybody is a little zoomed out, you know, especially it's Friday, Friday afternoon as well. And I appreciate you coming on and, and real estate's back in full full motion. Well not full motion, let's not let's not put it there, but you're <laughs> Pennsylvania, we're allowed to show houses at least now. So, you know, I do appreciate you all coming on. So thank you. Yeah, and and just to follow up on that too jesse i think what it, it, russ's good point like i have my notes here like a thousand you know a thousand notes hundred calls 20 appointments that's the goal but you broke it down into small action steps and that's what i think at the end of the day with prospecting that's all you're looking for is like okay like when every night i game plan I have my journal here in front of me i literally will game plan all my activities for the next day and if i put on there 
20 no cards and it takes me an hour to identify those properties and do it boom drop it off at the post office check that box move on to another activity that's all it's called there's a book called the compounding effect and all we're looking to do at Andy Mac and through this is just give you activities prospecting lead generating activities that if you just make a part of your daily routine it's like going to the gym every day like if you go to the gym every day three months down the road you're in better shape than if you didn't go to the gym every day. So we're just trying to give you some good stuff, some good workouts to do in your prospecting space so that down the road, like he said, four to six months, these things all start popping. All these behaviors start hitting at the same time and you're still doing them and you keep momentum. So uh, I'm doing this. This is, this is getting launched. I'm absolutely, uh, it's just, it makes sense to just add this in to your prospecting tools. So if anyone else is like dead set and doing it, um, just email me as well. I'm gonna put my email down here and we could just uh, bounce ideas off of each other and, and what's working and once the calls start coming in, we can um, you know, just talk through it together. So we're here to help. Cool. Thanks so much, definitely great information. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Uh Cool. cool. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, just reach out to us. We're here to help. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great, great afternoon and an even better weekend. Yep. Have a safe Bye -bye. holiday. Thank you.